I saw your dad. I mean, I've been a fan of your dad for years and years. I'm sure you have been as well, but but he's your dad, right? So yeah. I, I was curious, when was the first time you realized this this guy wasn't just your dad, he's John Fogarty to all of us. <laughs> when, when was that moment? Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember one singular moment, okay. but, you know, there's there's a few. Like when you go to school and your teacher, like, t- starts talking about something casually in class, and then, oh, yeah, like when Credence comes up and you're in Tokyo, Japan, and, like, that's, like, your history teacher's talking about, you know, something, or okay. when you, you go, like, somewhere and they're like, oh, Mr. Fogger, can I get a picture? It's like, what is this? Like, why... why? <laughs> Why are people wanting a picture of it? Exactly. Right? But yeah. then you go to the concert, you see all those people, and you you know hear the sounds and see the sights and smell the funny concert smells, and it's it's a whole it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing, and <laughs> and you know we all go through a time when our parents are just not cool, right? Yeah. Uh, was, oh yeah. What what was that time for you? Were like, <laughs> eh, did you not even like the music? Where what was your process with all that? Uh, yeah, probably the skateboard in high school years, kind of rebellious. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, didn't I? I like punk rock. I don't like, you know, old bands. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, and each generation feels that way too, right? Yeah. When did that shift for you, where you actually appreciated of like, oh wow, dad? I think the more the more I started becoming, you know, interested and obsessed with guitar, I started appreciating, you know, the the classics because yeah. you you can't not and right. play that and right it just feels too good it, <laughs> and and he made a comment at the show which i thought was very cool he was talking about his and he was killing it as well and his energy you know your dad is in your his early 70s yeah i hope i He's have insane. half as much uh nah, I, I i hope i do too <laughs> it's incredible i don't know where he gets he, it from yeah, he's like a little kid up there. It's yeah, amazing. It really he, it is. energized him. Yeah. He loves to play. He really does. He made a comment about the finger tapping years before Eddie Van Halen uh, got in the game. Uh, I mean, no, no, no. He he had put a humbucking pickup okay. in his Rickenbacker. Thank you. And I guess Eddie had done a similar thing, changing the pickups up on a Strat or something. Got it. For the humbucker. Because it. it's fatter. That's what's in a Les Paul or something. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> that's uh, that's a good but clarification. Yeah, he did that to his Acme. That's what that's what he was talking about. Okay, got it. Can we talk about? Can you mention Kenny Aronoff, um, amazing, legendary drummer? What's it like? I mean, you're obviously playing with your dad, but you get to play with Kenny Aronoff every night too. What's that it's, like? Well, it, it's insane. Like it's it's such a it's such good practice too for me to be up there every night and have that machine back there just right. slamming away. Right. That's Kenny. That's good old Kenny. Uh, yeah, it's it's insane the amount you know of musicianship and just power he has right. on the drums. He's and he's a great great guy. Really funny. Really friendly. Yeah. And he makes he's it awesome. Look- he makes it look so easy. I was watching him because yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm a drummer as well. And he's a pro. He's incredible, right? And just so smooth, so smooth. Oh yeah. Um, tell me, tell me what it's like being on tour. The highlights, the challenges. Being on tour, okay. It's kind of like being in a tube all the time. You go from the plane to the car to the either the hotel or the dressing room or the sound check and you wait around until you got to play and when you get to play that's the best part that's the part that's you know not working you're yeah. you're playing and it's awesome but every other part it feels like you're in a tube i mean when you get a day off and you're in a cool city you get to get out get out explore have some food that's amazing that's that's one of the perks of tour, but a lot of the times you don't get to do that. You just got to sit around and wait to play, and <laughs> that part sucks. Yeah, that's got to be challenging. What? Yeah. What are some of the things do you end up practicing? Uh, reading a lot. I read a lot. Okay. Uh, write a lot. Think about lyrics and stuff. Music ideas. Uh, a lot of listening. A lot of listening to music. It's just a lot of just kind of sitting and, and waiting. <laughs> right, right. Do you so ever how just, you feel it? Yeah. I mean, when I was talking with Kenny and, and Nathan and James, I mean, the, the tour is grinding at times, right? Yeah. I mean, do you ever just take a day off and sleep, catch up on sleep? Sometimes, not a whole day. I'd feel yeah. like 
I'd feel bad about myself if I did that. But yeah, definitely there's some days where I'll I'll wake up a little later and kind of hang around the hotel and not really want to go out and explore. Sometimes you're not in the mood. Right. Even if in your you're in Paris or somewhere amazing, it's like I got to get out here. I got to get up. But sometimes you just can't do it. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, and if you don't mind, can I play another clip? This is about 58 seconds here. Yeah. This is a clip my wife and I took of you and your dad. You guys, you and your dad are going back and forth, trading a little bit uh, (laughs) at the end of a song. Let's check this out. And you got a choreographed part there. It was uh, (laughs) fantastic. You guys just look so happy together. Yeah, it's, it's too much fun up there. That's, yeah, that's great. What's it like? It's, uh, sorry, please, go ahead. No, it's hard to put in words. It's, yeah. It just feels awesome. <laughs> it's incredible. What's it like to, I mean, you're playing huge shows at this point. The cra- Everybody, including my wife and I, just singing along to these iconic songs that make people so happy. Do you ever just sort of step back and, and look at that and kind of go, holy cow, this is, people love this music. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. When you when you hear the crowd singing the words over the music, it's like whoa, right. like that's a song, man. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. What have you talked with your dad about? I mean, you know, CCR was only together for a short number of years. It wasn't like yeah. it's the Stones and a fifty-year-old band, but they made some iconic songs. What have you learned from your dad about songwriting? Hmm. I think. One major thing is being simple and keeping things, you know, keep it a a simple story, keep it, make it a story, make it simple and keep it, you know, rich with, like, make it a story. Don't just, you know, write random words and have it, you know, convey something, but keep it simple. And and that's hard for a lot of people to keep it simple. Sure. And sometimes it, you know, it comes up, it can come off as, uh, basic or kind of cheesy or something but a good song is a good song you bet that's right yeah it doesn't have to be in in 13 9 or whatever yeah. time, <laughs> you know it's like 4-4 four, four is good these are yeah. songs no. we, that are solid foundation yeah, yeah. They, they live in our souls so you know I'm sure you get asked all the time about your dad obviously and rightfully so I was curious though about what influence what role has your mom played in your music uh in my music or in my dad's music both both yeah well she is she's totally transformed his career i mean she's kind of taken over as his manager and she produced the vegas show she produced this woodstock show she's kind of like the the woman behind the scenes she's doing all the you know, the, the Woodstock idea to have, you know, all the little moments like she picked, I think she picked all the songs and she brought them to John and was like, do you want to do? I mean, he might have said yes or no to a couple sure. different ones. But yeah, she kind of it's her, you know, idea, this whole thing. But love it. Yeah, she she's she's really pushing for him and she she fights for him. That's fantastic. So, yeah, major, major part in his and my life, too, and in, in my career and with me and my brother's music and Hardy Har, she's a major fighter for us. She's always pushing us to record label people and whatnot. That's great. Very yeah. cool. So, yeah, be- <laughs> behind every good man, right, is a good woman. So that's oh, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. yeah, she's great. What have been some highlights uh, since you have been on tour with your dad of, like, some iconic 
places that you've gotten to play, some mind blowing moments that you go, wow, here I am. Yeah. Uh, Hollywood Bowl was one of them. Yeah. That was insane. Yeah. Because that's a ho- our hometown. So right. Right. that felt really awesome. Yeah. Um, Radio City is really cool, too. Yeah. That, just, that's a great theater. You guys just played there, right? Yeah. It's so beautiful in there. It's amazing. Uh, there's a place in uh, Sweden called Dalhalla. It's in, at the bottom of a rock quarry. Wow. And yeah, it's like deep down in this pit, but it's so beautiful and like turquoise green water and wow. like a big amphitheater set up. It's, it's really nice. It's a little cold, but <laughs> beautiful. It's yeah, that was one of my favorite venues. And are people swimming in the quarry while you guys are no. talking out? <laughs> they weren't swimming this time. No. Maybe if it was hotter, if it was hotter out, maybe some people might jump in. Okay. Got it. Got <laughs> it. Yeah. Is there a place or places that you haven't played yet that you want to play on your bucket list? Uh, I'd want to get back to some more festivals. I know I, when I was uh, younger, we went to Glastonbury. I don't think I played with my dad, but he performed. But I'd like to get back to Glastonbury. That's a crazy festival. Yeah. It's huge. Sounds good. Um, yeah, South America. I mean, yeah, we, I want to go back there. Um, Japan, we have we've never, we've been there for the Fuji Rock Festival, but I didn't get to go. I was in college. So, yeah, I'd love to go to Japan and play over there. That'd be cool. I mean, obviously, your your dad has had uh, other guitar players, and there was a time when you said, I'd rather be skateboarding or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> when, when was it that you said to your dad, okay, I want this gig, and what was your first official gig playing with your dad? Uh, the first time I played, I think I was 14 or 14. 15 and i only did two songs and tyler did two i think we did down on the corner and i played the riff to up around the bend yeah. and that was a big deal right, <laughs> at 14 yeah. sure 14 where was that yeah. uh i remember we did royal albert hall that wasn't the only place but that was like the standout wow. and that was yeah. like crazy because i you know you you listen to like famous live at royal albert hall like sure. zeppelin or cream, cream or something right. it's like yeah. can't believe i gotta play here right exactly. not worth must have been nervous at 14, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I didn't I don't think I looked up really. <laughs> sure, right? Yeah, exactly. Make sure the fingers are on the notes, right? Yeah. Yeah. What uh what's it like now? Are there ever nerves before the show now? And if so, how do you deal with that? Not too much. I mean, it's it's more just exciting, you know, like excitement ready to go on and play. I hate I don't like waiting around a long time before playing. That's right. that's the thing. Not really nerves, so yeah. you know. Do you guys have any pre show rituals that you do as a band before you go out? Uh not not all together, not really, no. Not okay. with Johnny. Yeah. Okay. It's just <laughs> everybody sort of let, kinda does their own thing. Yeah, it's just yeah. sort of let let's go, huh? Yeah, showtime. Right. Yeah, show Pre- time. The video starts. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't look like John is slowing down at all. The energy of a 25-year-old. Has he yeah. talked about how long he wants to do this? Uh, I don't think he wants to stop. So, yeah. 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 Long as are you guys working on new material? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've we've started writing in his studio. Wow. We haven't we haven't recorded much yet. So, yeah, I'm I'm not sure when that's going to begin. Hopefully soon. I. Yeah, I can't say for sure, though. Okay. But yes, we have started writing together. That's very cool. And, <laughs> and is that you and your dad and Tyler, and Tyler all yes. writing yeah, together? All Eddie, and I know we talked about your mom. Am I leaving out any other of the talented Fogarty family? <laughs> is there anybody else well, here? Our, our little sister, Kelsey, she's coming up. She's about to start her, or she just started her senior year at high school, but... Yeah, she's a little strummer, too, so watch out for her. Wow, man. <laughs> and I, I heard a dog in the background. I don't know if they're on yeah, bass or anything or that's, whatever. That's Violet Rose. Violet Rose. I <laughs> love it, man. We have over here. <laughs> and Cre- my, dog's, or my parents' dog is Credence, so. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> and they're all golden retrievers. They're crazy. 